going to present a, a little a sample tool we we just built to to try to demonstrate an idea. But before that, I will briefly introduce uh, what what we have done and what we're trying to do with with our tool web tool microdraw. Okay, so we built microdraw because of our own project where we are neuroscientists, we're interested in brain development in brain evolution. So we had this project to study the ferret brain. And I, I was saying that we developed microdraw because we had this project where we were acquiring histological data from ferrets during development. We had a lot of data and we didn't have the, the tools that we needed for, for working on that. So we looked around first and then we, we decided to build our own. So a uh, micro draw for those who, who have used it, it allows you to um, very quickly look into your images and it adds a layer of annotation very much like what Illustrator would, would allow you to do. So here you see on the on the left, uh, the, the ferret brains that we have made available on the web at the moment. And then you see a little bit of the, uh, the interface for annotation with all the different tools and then also the, the the configuration window where you can uh, define a project, add the data and the collaborators you want to have, and also the the access, the visibility of your project if it's public or private, etc. Uh, so uh, all our data is available through this website that just adds MicroDraw as a as a widget. So any of you could have, if you have this type of data, add a widget micro drawing the same way that you would add a YouTube video and allow for collaborative uh, work on, on high resolution histological data uh, right on the web. Um, th this is a, a, an example of the table and then you just click on any of those images and they will, they will be immediately available for working on them. So how do you get data into micro draw? I think that we have never gone too much into the detail. Let's say that we have a, a data set that has these two uh, slices, one with a kitten and the other one with a dodge. And how do you do to, to get that data into micro draw? So you can host, the data can be hosted anywhere. You can host it yourself or it can be hosted by some other, by some other service. So um, images have, are transformed into a pyramid of resolutions. Uh, so at the first level of resolution, there's only one pixel. In the second level of resolution, two by two, et cetera, et cetera. And then you get at the size of a tile, which is a square of 256 uh, pixels. After that, you start adding more and more tiles. So after level eight, where you get to 256, you start having more tiles and you can go very, very far in the, in the level of detail, depending on the resolution of your data. And so the last levels, uh, it's not uh, unfrequent that they have more than 200,000 images, okay? So this is, for example, if you have a file structure that would be this way, uh, you need to create a cat.json file that will describe your data set. Then uh, this uh, cat.json in particular has two slices, the, the cat and the dodge. Uh, then there's a dzi deep zoom image file for the cat with all the files. And here are the levels from zero to nine in this case. And then inside the, the JPEGs, which make all the, the small tiles. And the same for the Dodge. I'm not this. It could be in, in some other format. And then in that case, what you provide is a function that will tell uh, the viewer how your tiles are organized, which has allowed us to uh, index in MicroDraw without downloading any data. Uh, uh, data from many, many different services. And here, this example shows uh, how you can get data from the blueprint uh, non-human primate atlas. Okay, so it's just a matter of finding out what's the way in which they sort out their tiles. And then you write a, a small JSON file and no need for downloading anything. You are immediately working on, on this data. So all this data is available already to you through the MicroDraw interface. Here you have an example of the blueprint NHP a Macaca Mulata development, Big Brain, uh, Claude Lepage was very kind to, to put the data uh, already like super nicely organized. And then you have the 20 micron version of the Big Brain available in Corona, Sagittal and Axel Slash. You can immediately go there and, and start working instead of listening to me. Uh, and also, for example, data from the Comparative Brain Museum, which is a beautiful data set where Katya has already shown you a little bit how to work with that. And uh, NIH brain span human development. Like the, the, there's a lot of data sets that you can only view on the web or even sometimes just have a, a tiny thumbnail. Uh, here you can work collaboratively on that data and, and start using it for your own analysis. Uh, so how do you actually work with MicroDraw? This is one example from our work with the ferrets. So you start by 
segmenting the, the structure that you are interested. We're interested in the relationship between the development of the neocortex and the development of brain folding. So we start by segmenting the, the neocortex. As you can see here, we have uh, two hemispheres in this example. And then after that, we do as Ramonica Hall would have done back then. No, uh, you know, Ramonica Hall, he used the most uh, up-to-date uh, tools that he had at that time. In his case, it was this fantastic size microscope, I think. So we go to our Jupyter notebooks, the equivalent of uh, the 21st century. And we are kind of a bit of a nerd. So, so we just code our, our analysis, we get our data, and then you can download. There's an API in MicroDraw, which allows you to get all the data, as Katia showed uh, briefly the, the, the last time. And then you can do any fancy analysis that, that you want. For example, here, we're using an optimal trans a transport alignment to try to get contours and then uh, get the, the, the different uh, grade level value changes in, in, in our data. But we know that for many of our people in our, in our community and many for our colleagues, that would be like coding LibreOffice if you just wanted to write uh, an abstract, you know, like you don't necessarily want to go into the, into the code and have to compile stuff just to get some analysis done. So one an alternative, of course, and, and we have had that, that impulse in, in the past, would be to, to have an interface in MicroDraw that would look like this. So we just start adding any new tool that we think, you know, we, we, we generate tools like every every week there, there's five. Uh, so at the end, we wouldn't have any space for working and that's to some extent something that, that happens. So we, we have decided to take this different approach and, be, and benefit from the MicroDraw API to try to uh, more encourage people to uh, work toward a distributed ecosystem of image analysis services. And, and the, the idea that, that we will illustrate here is building an, an external website that will implement a trainable random forest segmenter using scikit-image and scikit-learn in, in Python, not in JavaScript, although it's a website. There's no server, it's, it works purely on the, on the web browser. So it can be used by people who can't afford uh, maintaining a, a server and using Pyodide, which is a library that, that lets you run Python in the web browser. And it's based on code uh, by Emmanuel Gouillard. Um, and so I will show you very quickly the idea. So we have data would be sitting in the cloud. This is the, the, the general idea. You would use MicroDraw to view that data, to annotate that data. And then through the API, it would be possible to allow the trainable segmenter to communicate with MicroDraw back and forth. So the idea with the trainable segmenter is this. This, this is our implementation that, that's currently working. So we took, for example, one slice of the, the big brain. This is slice 3,700, which is kind of in the middle of the, the stack in coronal slices. You just segment some regions and you say, this is region one, this is region two, region like any regions. Then the trainable segmenter will extract a, a vector of features for each of the voxels. And then based on that and the classes that you've just indicated, it will, it will try to guess. So here it's the, the our prototype actually running. Uh, so it queries up one slice, it queries the annotations, and then it runs for about six to 10 seconds, and it produces a segmentation based on the classes that you indicated. If you are not happy with the segmentation, you can go back to MicroDraw in real time, change it, add more hints in places where it's not working very nicely, and rerun the analysis. It takes on, on in total about, about 20 seconds. So this is for the slice where the, the, the segmenter was trained, so it's not surprising that it works not too bad. But here you can see for a slice that, that pretty close, uh, two slices down, down the road, but even 100 slices down the road or, or uh, in slice uh, 3000, the results are, are not too bad. So the, the aim is not to, to sell you the, the trainable segmenter, although it's quite a, a nice starting point for many of the segmentation tasks that we are doing, but more encourage you to, to maybe embrace this idea of making uh, small services very focused that could work together so that uh, we don't rely on a massive uh, monolithic infrastructure, but more on a, on a distributed network. And thank you very much.